Okay, control for our furnace blower. I didn't like the way this furnace blower right from the start would squeal the belt. And it, the belt would last a long time, but it just always bothered me. I wanted the variable, not so much the variable speed as soft start. So we've got the soft start on it now. You can see what happens. I'll just turn the fan on and it starts in with the relay there and starts the control gets power coming through the resistors and then the timer here in a little bit will engage the larger relay and now it starts spooling up i thought about doing this without the timer and just using um, the drive ready function with the relay programming the controller and I just decided I had to get busy, make it work, do it the simple way. This is the easiest. I did one other thing I tried though, was these two wires are coming back off of the timer also telling the drive to engage and start moving. They come in at the same time as the relay that gives it full power bypassing the charge resistors. Okay, what are we doing here? Why, why, why? This furnace was installed with only 14 gauge wire to it. This uh, inverter here, this inverter drive is supposed to have eight gauge wire to it. Big, big difference. It actually only draws five to nine amps running the blower. It doesn't need that big a wire, but it does for the inrush current for the capacitors. Done this on a lot of installations. Didn't want to rewire everything all the way back to the box. It'll run on a 15 amp circuit just fine. Um, it's kind of a shame that they don't put part of this programming capacity, you still need an external resist uh, contactor, but they should start putting this in some of the VFDs because it allows you to use them in 10 times as many applications as you can without it. When you set up a system like this, first off your resistors, you want to size your resistors with the idea of it's a dead short. So in this case, I've got 1,000 ohms, two 500 ohm resistors running on 220 volts. You can figure that out anyway. Not too much for 100 watt resistors. Just figuring it as if they were just dead shorted instead of feeding the inverter. And the timer, start out with your timer on a long time. See how long it takes for the inverter to charge up. And then you want to leave it somewhere beyond that so that your pull-in relay will not be uh, damaging the points. You want to not go just barely where it seems to come on because if it needs a little bit more in the capacitor, you'll overload your points possibly on your contactor.